there, do you have any idea what you're listening to? London Philharmonic? It's Venus. Uh-huh. Venus. Why not? We bounce the signals off the moon's surface. There's no reason that Venus shouldn't radiate impulses. I don't mean the static. Can't you hear it? The other thing? What other thing? Listen to it, Paul. Listen to the voice. Gorilla Geek going 10 8. So guys, this video is about scanner antennas and this question came up from a PM I got from the one and only analytical survivor. That's right. To my surprise, he PM'd me about this particular question and I'm happy to uh, help in any way. And this also uh, has been a pretty interesting subject to kind of research as well. And I think I'm going to change my my setup a little bit too to, to include this particular antenna that I'm going to showcase today. But uh, yeah, not all antennas are the same. There's a lot of tuning and the size and and types and all that. But this this antenna here that I'm going to showcase would uh, for scanning is it looks like it's going to be the ticket for. Uh, for a really efficient scanning of, of the radio waves out there in the field. I mean, in, in an emergency situation or something like that, the best thing you could do is listen. Listen to what's going on. Gathering intelligence to benefit you or whoever you're with and, and, and find out what's going on. Uh, like another YouTuber would say, uh, you listen twice and speak once. And that's a pretty good... Uh, analogy or, or advice to give anybody really because uh, you really don't want to be transmitting all the time uh, they'll just find you or whatever anyway that, that's going off the subject here this test this uh, video is about and scanner antennas D130 disc tone disc cone antenna for scanners this here is an, an example of a disc cone antenna it's got an unusual shape. You got the one whip on top, then the kind of like a ground plane there. But it's really not a ground plane. This is what you call a disc. And then here you see your cones, or the shape of a cone with the rest of the radials. And that's how I get this name of a disc cone antenna. And this is an awesome wide band receiver it would resonate in the frequencies between 25 megahertz to 1.3 gigahertz or 1300 megahertz and this is what one looks like mounted on a tower and this facility here is a law enforcement tower and they use this to scan the airwaves when uh, things go crazy or something like that not really they don't use a scanner but anyway they have one up here and uh, this has been up here for about a year and a half now and uh, it's been holding up pretty good no rust the whole assembly is made out of uh, out of uh, stainless steel except for the insulator here of course and uh, this part right here but the rest of it is stainless steel and there's no there is no signs of uh, corrosion anywhere. Uh, upon a closer look, these are solid, but the radials going down here are hollow. And that's probably one thing I really don't like about it. It's, it's hollow, but it's still stainless steel. There's a little bit of water that will collect in this. It's not gonna be great performance. I don't know if you can see that. There's a little bit of condensation that collects on the bottom here, inside the uh, hollow tube. But uh, it doesn't affect performance, I already checked it out. So maybe as a preventive maintenance each year, maybe you should go up in, uh, and, uh, what do you call it, drain it out. Or look for another antenna that has a solid piece of, uh, Type, uh, rod here instead of a hollow pop rod and this is what it looks like 
so this is pretty much how it looks like in the screen here in the test equipment. Here's 20 megahertz, this line right here, and the far extreme is 1 gigahertz or 1000 megahertz. The cutoff point between a good antenna and a bad antenna is this point right here. That's 12 dB signet of return loss. So it kind of looks like around the 20 megahertz range, it's not too efficient. And when I go down in megahertz, that's 107. That's when it starts to turn really good. Right there, at that peak right there, that's a really good reception there. And that's 137. 147 right here, that's still good. So you're gonna receive the hand bands really good. At that point there, that's uh, 157. Public safety frequencies you'll hear really good. Let me see, on the top of that range there, that's just barely making it, that's 177. That's the top band of the VHF. So let's continue down some. What is this, 220? So that's a ham band as well, the 220 band. I forgot what the centimeters are on that is. But you're gonna get that really good. Ham band, 440, really good. You're about right there. Let me enter that and see what the 14 dBs of uh, return loss. It's acceptable. Pretty much this line right here, if you draw a line from there to there, that's an, an acceptable antenna or uh, working antenna as far as minimum specs. 800, you're doing really good at the 800 spot around there for public safety uh, frequencies. So across the whole band, you're doing pretty good, except for the lower band, like 20 megahertz. Uh, let me see, this spot right here is 20. 20, I think this will be 25 right here. So 20 to 25 megahertz, you, you, it's not very good. But then it starts to taper down into the, uh, into the, the baseline there. And um, I don't know what to say about that. So this radio here is putting out 4 watts, and if I turn this dial here, it'll, re it'll measure the reflected power coming back into the radio, and it's 1 watt, so that's 25% that's of power coming back into the ra my radio here. That is a bad match, uh, no good, it's going to burn out the radio and stuff. So it doesn't work too well in 50 megahertz around there, 6 meters. So let's try 2 meters, or specifically 147 megahertz, which is somewhere in the middle of the hand band around there. Uh, this time I'm using a Yeast uh, Wuxon, this is brand new, and I'm going to do a review on this pretty soon, don't know when. But anyway, uh, let's transmit into that. Full power out is around a little bit shy over 5 watts, that's pretty damn good. Now let's see what the reflective power on that. Remember, 10% is the magic number that says that the antenna is no good for transmit or it's not efficient, it's not within industry specification. So let's look at the needle, see if it goes. I'm transmitting and it doesn't even move. So at 147 megahertz, it's a really good match. Uh, granted, I'm going, let me see, 16 feet to the pedestal and from the pedestal up to the antenna is another 40 feet so I'm thinking 65 feet of transmission line up the antenna and I got minimal reflective power going out that antenna. That's pretty good. It'll be a good backup for that range. Now this is the public safety range, uh, 160 something megahertz and I'm going to be specific at what it is. but. A little bit over 5 watts, pretty good. Let's see what the reflected power is. Hardly anything. It's moving just a wee bit. That's definitely less than 10%. That's within spec. All right, let's try 440. So this is UHF, 440 megahertz around there. And the uh, slug here, the filter slug here is uh, rated for 2.5 watts. So it's going to pick out my signal if it's more than that wattage, which it will. And it's pegged. 
I don't know what the maximum is, but the important measurement is what's being reflected back. So I just got to turn the dial here. Transmit one more time. Hardly any move. That's definitely less than 1% or 2% there. So 440, amateur UHF range, good to go as a backup antenna. Let's try 800 megahertz, public safety. And that's closest to the far end that I could go uh, with the equipment that I have. Okay. Okay, here I got 800 megahertz range, specifically 850 something, somewhere around there. It's towards the top of the range. So let's see power out coming out. And it's past my scale, so it's at least past 2.5 watts. The important measurement, as always, is the reflected power. And it looks like... Uh, that looks like half a watt coming out. So five watts coming, transmitting five watts and half a watt coming out. I think that's a little bit past 10%. So we're in the fringe there between good and bad on the 800 megahertz range for transmit. But uh, amateurs and hobbyists out there are not gonna be transmitting on those frequencies. But anyway, it will receive pretty well still. Okay guys. Hopefully the wind is not going to mess up the sound, but uh, I'm in another location. This down here is a uh, fire department station here, the dispatch center. So uh, all the calls go out from here to all the uh, stations out in the field to uh, dispatch firehouses. And we have an example, another one, of a disc cone antenna. This one is the same model as the other one. Uh, I didn't know that until I came up here to look at it and it's it is a uh, diamond D130 NJ or D130J The NJ and the J corresponds to what connector that is terminated with and of course I can't tell with all that uh, weatherproofing on it So either way it works But this has been up here before my time around in this territory. So we're talking about five years and uh, I'm estimating this antenna has been mounted up here for at least 15 years. And it's stainless steel, like I said, and it looks brand spanking new. The only thing that I can see is one of the, one of these uh, radials here, right there, has fallen off. It looks like it came loose and it just fell off. Uh, but the other ones are still intact. I guess the guy didn't tighten it down. Uh, tight enough antenna as the other one. So I want to take the same test measurements on this one to see how well it's performing after all these years up here. And this here is a Sierra Nevada uh, foothills area and it gets snow, wind, ice, you name it. Uh, below zero and the height of this antenna I think is uh, 80 feet off the ground. So uh, it does get hit with all sorts of nasty weather up here.